Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a 48 year old uh, part time teacher, and I am all about money, teaching, and minimalism. Today's video is going to be about my April sinking funds and cash stuffing. Um, but as you can tell from the title, it's digital because as a minimalist, while I adore watching those videos, those cash stuffing videos, y'all, I watch them all. Look at him. I watch them all the time. Okay. When I say all the time, like I can sit, nobody get down. No, get down. I can watch those videos all the time, but as a minimalist, it's just too many steps. It's not, you know, part of my life motto is how can I make this simple? And so mine are, my sinking funds are digital, but I do cash stuff sort of, meaning I have one envelope. It's a household envelope. Um, just because I figure sometimes like, you know, I have to get toilet paper or shampoo or toothpaste, stuff like that. So I figured I needed to start putting money aside for that. So this month I started with that. So I just say $40 in an envelope for that. That way I can kind of build up and I can take it out as needed. And then my other cash is literally just, I take out, I'm a total of 500 because my idea is that I'm really trying to create sustainable money habits. And so I feel like if 500, which right now is really a stretch for my current budget because I work part time and I have debt and stuff. But I feel like if I do 500 and that is comfortable, that will fight against lifestyle inflation when my money does increase, because I know that 500 I can get buy on. I can survive. I don't feel like I'm depriving myself from stuff. So that's the amount that I use. Um, and I pay for my groceries that way. Um, any dining out, any lottery tickets, I spend $10 a month on the lottery. Um, any waxings, I do my underarm waxings, pedicures, all that kind of stuff just comes from that. And that's a combination of cash and then a debit card, because sometimes, you know, you might need to order something online. So I try to keep about 20 to $40 in that account because I'm not usually ordering stuff online, but every now and then. So I wanted to walk you through my new system for my digital cash stuffings. So I have an account with Capital One. This is not sponsored. Maybe one day it will be, but it's not right now. Um, I have an account with Capital One. And you know, the cool thing about Capital One is you can set up multiple savings accounts. I don't know exactly how many, but I know I mean, I'm sure you could probably get into the double digits. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my little uh, notebook. So for my sinking funds this month, I have $60. Now, normally $60, which equates to three twenties to me, wouldn't even feel like worth budgeting. Cause you'd be like, oh, that's such a small amount of money. I may as well not even try, but because I'm really trying to create sustainable money habits that keep me out of debt, I realize I have to save up for stuff. When I look back at my credit card statements over the years, I realized that a 90% of the things that I was charging, had I just planned for them because they were not surprises, then I would have had money to cover it. And even at this phase, because I'm budgeting with such a small amount of money, um, at least it will add up. And again, I'm hopeful that my financial situation will eventually change. And then that way I'll already be in the habit of saving. And then that way I'll just have more to save. So I have $60 for this month. The first one is Buddy, which is the dog. Um, I'm putting $25 in a sinking fund for him. And the reason why is because he gets his baths cost about 50 bucks because that's including the bath and his nails being trimmed. And he's like 70 pounds. Y'all saw him getting up here. So I cannot wash him. And I tried once, but then I couldn't do his nails. So I was like, you know what? perfect thing. Let me save up. Now, if I save 25 every month, then that means in theory, 
every two months he can get a bath, which was perfect because he doesn't go outside. I mean, other than like quick walks and to pee. So he's not like an outside dog. So he doesn't get super dirty. Um, the other thing is I've decided I roll my coins. Like I don't use those little coin machines cause then they take a cut. So I don't mind. I'll sit on the floor, watch some YouTube videos, watch TV and roll my coins. So I just finished rolling coins yesterday and I have about $30 in that. So I've also decided that I'm going to put my coins that I roll, that's going to go into Buddy's sinking fund also. Because in addition to his baths every two months, um, he also gets, you know, his annual shots, which end up being about $200 in October. So I'm hoping this year that either I'll have enough money to cover it fully or at least have at least half of it if I stick with this system of $25 every month. And then every time I roll change, whatever I get, I put in that sinking fund. So um, his starting balance was I think it was like two, maybe two dollars and ten cents. I can't, I can't remember. I didn't write that one down. Um but it's now, um, I added the $25. So now his sinking fund has $27 and 43 cents. My next sinking fund is HOA slash short-term disability insurance. So my HOA and my short-term disability insurance are both due the same month. My HOA is like super reasonable. It's like $162 a quarter. Um, so as you see, that's not super expensive. And then my short-term disability, who I have with Colonial Life, I've had them for like ever. I love it. Um, it's the same month. And so I find that, oh my goodness, that's almost like $300 every, I think it's what, January, April, July, and October, something like that. And I find that whenever that pops up, I'm like, oh, I don't have it. Then it's eaten into my budget and I didn't save for it. So I was like, perfect. So I'm saving $15 for that. Um, so that starting balance was $4.95. And now it's $19.05. So getting there. Um, my next sinking fund is my car. I have two cars. Um, one of my cars um, is electric, which means I do not have to worry about gas and maintenance is very limited on it. But what does happen is when tag time rolls around, states will get their money. Um, I'm in a state, I'm in the Southeast, and unfortunately my state does not reward you for going green. So I have to pay like over $200 every year to get my tags renewed. And then my other car is a Civic and it's a, I think it's a 2009 or 10. Um, and so to renew that one is not very expensive at all. It might be like $20, but I feel like I should start a car sinking fund, A, to cover my car registrations, but also like when I need an oil change for my Civic and stuff like that, and at least have some of that. So um, I'm saving $5 for that. And so the starting balance was $5 and 27 cents. And now it's $10 and 27 cents. Then I'm doing vacation. I have no intention on going on any vacations for the next uh, two years, not until I turn 50, because I'm giving myself this time to try to figure out this part-time income and other ways that I can make money and reduce my spending and create better money habits that are sustainable. So, but I'm still, I know that vacations at some point will be a big part of my life again. So I'm saving $5 every month for my vacations. So the fund started at $5.12 and now it's at $10.12. And then my next one was I have home repairs and emergency fund. Now, I wish that I had more to save in these, but I wanted to prioritize my sinking funds based on guaranteeing, knowing I, when I would need the money. I know Buddy has to be first because he has got to get baths with some sort of regularity. And I know he gets annual exams. Um, my HOA and my short-term disability insurance, I know that that's coming up like clockwork. And so that's why I chose to save my home repairs and my emergency fund for last. Um, my house is um, in pretty good shape. Um, so in home repairs, um, 
I mean, if I could avoid getting some stuff done right now, I think I would. But, you know, look, knock on wood, nothing goes wrong. But I also wanted to make sure that I keep five dollars in this checking account. I don't know why I just don't want it at zero. Um, and so for that, I had to break up the last five dollars. So I'm putting two fifty in home repairs. So home repairs is starting at five dollars and 14 cents. So now I'll have seven dollars and 64 cents. And then for my emergency fund, it started at $5.22 and I'm putting $2.50 in, which means now it'll be $7.22. So again, um, I know, especially if you're like my age, saving little bits of money almost seems like a complete waste of time. Um, but I'm trying to change my mindset because I know that in the long run, that's kind of what got me in this debt in the first place is like kind of nickel and diming stuff and not saving. So spending $5 here, spending $20 here, spending $10 here. So I'm trying to adopt that same mindset with my savings. Um, so I hope you found it helpful. The other thing that I'm exploring this month is uh, different ways to make money um, without exchanging time for money because you know, I know that we live in a time where it's like this hustle culture and you're like, yes, I could do DoorDash or I could babysit. But the problem is I don't want to have to keep doing that in order to sustain my lifestyle, especially now that I took a pay cut and I work part time. And um, for a hot second, I really was considering like going back to full time teaching. But I'm like, I can't because if I go back to full time teaching, I know that no matter how hard I work, no matter how much energy I put in into it, no matter how creative I am next year, this time, I will know that I'm making $96,000. And while that is wonderful money, I also know that if I stay this course, that is definitely less predictable, more uncomfortable. But what I know is that I have real estate. Um, I've started an LLC. I've really been diligent about finding grants. I'm actually um, in the process of doing a renovation on my one property right now. I only have one, but my goal is to have at least two by the end of this year. Um, I hope, but you never know. Um, but I'm doing a renovation. I only do Section 8 housing, but I mean, like, investing into real estate and that is not for everybody but I absolutely love it but I mean it just changes your money so quickly so like once these renovations are done like right now my tenant moved out which means I just lost a thousand dollars uh per month however because I do section eight they pay by the number of bedrooms so I'm in the process of renovating it now and adding two more bedrooms well once I add those two more bedrooms instead of getting like the 1100 I was getting um, because I'm doing this renovation work and they have some little um, he, he really thinks that he is a little tiny dog come on he uh, he thinks he's a lap dog you see yourself um, so when I get that house rented I will be making twenty two hundred dollars and so while that is requiring me to exchange some time I just feel like that's a better use of my time. So I have definitely created, you um, I've created a new system. He is being so ridiculous, y'all. I've created a new system for myself, which is on outside of my part-time income, which I make about 3,100 a month. Um, I'm only willing to exchange my time for energy if I'm making at least $100. And so that means if I'm going to go, like I can't go babysit and then I make, you know, $50 for three hours or something like that, because that could have been three hours that I was spending either making teacher pay teacher stuff, which I haven't had a whole lot of success, but it, it's, it's growing a little bit. Um, or it could have been, I could have been researching grants or I could have been filling out applications about um, different organizations that are supporting, you know, minority businesses. So I just feel like I would rather use my time more to educate myself and to grow my money exponentially. So I'm being very, very picky about like exchanging my time for money. So I still do like Saturday tutoring at my school when it's available, which is great because that's like four hours and I make like 200 and something dollars. Um, I'm signed up for summer school, but I'm really being, you know, stingy about like just kind of doing DoorDash and that kind of stuff. Uh, Cause I just feel like at 48, y'all I'm tired and I need to make sure that God willing, if I'm still here at 58, that I have found some ways to create money that do not require me 
to do some sort of physical labor because I just think that that is exhausting on your body. So again, I hope um, everybody enjoyed this. Maybe you got a little something from it. If you have some tips, uh, please let me know. And again, I'm trying to be more consistent. So I figured since it's the first of um, the month, I would start with a money video. Um, so again, thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope everybody has a great week. Um, I'm recording this on a Sunday. And as always, be grateful. Bye-bye. Thank you.